Yeah. New product time. Later. New. Okay, new products. Uh, this is uh, not exactly a product, but it, it, we do have it. It is Circuit Playground, and uh, we have some updates. The big update for Circuit Playground is PDF viewing. So if you're using Circuit no, Playground, no PDF importing, which is right. Well, it, it can you can import the data sheets. So the the big thing is you can send uh, uh, you can use any app so it's system level PDF stuff so yeah uh, PIS- which is handy yeah system level PDF support allowing apps like Mail and Safari to send data sheets over to Circuit Playground so let's say if someone emails you a data sheet you can then you can save it to drag, Circuit Playground yeah. or okay. if you're online and you're like at the like the TI website and you see a data sheet you can then open in and you're like you're going to open in iBooks yeah. you can open in Play- Playground and so you have like your data sheet stored yeah. awesome so uh, cap code for uh, uh, the labeling was fixed uh, all up uh, calc show the circuit name top bar that's on the iPad optimized standard values on LED resistor calc uh, differential calc uh, warning shown with save values uh, toolbar always visible after data Sheet viewer, a USB A pinout illustration updated with pin offset. Um, lots of uh, little fixes. It's and, my favorite uh, app. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm so glad that I had this app written for me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was me. It was you're the number one customer. Yeah. So uh, everybody give some big ups to Colin big ups. for um, updating this. Colin did excellent. Yeah, so it's. Uh, it is the best circuit app. It's the best engineering app out there. Okay. Okay. More Next up, this is sort of a new product, but I have to mention the new product section. So sign up if there's a there's a new product coming. Uh, new BeagleBone. New BeagleBone. We're not. We're not. Can't, we can't say anything more. But if you sign up on the product page, we'll have them. They're getting us a, a big chunk of them. Well, we can't. Um, which is going to be. Um, well, we can't really say anything, so I don't want to mess up. Okay. But anyway, sign up, and uh, uh, Ti and uh, their will partner be great. is uh, making sure we get plenty of these. And it's pretty powerful. Um, you'll like it, and it's going to be at a really good price. So it's sign up. So that it's in our new product section. So and there's I, awesome I stuff like it. built-in flash and um, HDMI. HDMI. Yeah, and all uh, sorts of good stuff. And uh, we have one where we're using it and it's working out. We like it. Okay, okay. next up. So, uh, scratch badges are in stock. We got permission. Scratch are very popular, fun yes. to use. We already uh, get permissions for all of our badges. That's yeah. why they take longer. Yeah. The Pearl badge. They didn't get back to us for like eight months. But when they did, they approved it. We got them made. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, next up, um, we're experimenting. So uh, because we have um, lots of uh, kid-friendly stuff, we're getting suggestions from parents and educators. So this one is a marker. Um, it's, it's a Crayola um, piece of hardware. And uh, the folks at Griffin made it, who makes really good accessories. Uh, so this is the Crayola Color Studio HD. And it's basically a, a coloring book app. And the, it's a smart pen that, that works with an iPad. So we have a real coloring book. I'm also excited to take this thing apart and figure out how it works. Yeah, there's some neat things that, yeah. So a lot of these um, kind of kid-friendly things are also hacking. And uh, so we have this in our store. Um, check it out. It's a coloring uh, coloring book for, for iPad. Uh, Kid-tested, Lady Ada approved um, app. Uh, okay. Next up, We have hardware. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, we used to make and carry the fuse box, but um, we eventually discontinued it. It wasn't mm, terribly popular, and we wanted to make a bunch of improvements, and we never got around to it. But um, uh, uh, the Oozebox team eventually made their own kit, which is kind of like half based on our design and whatever, and, and it was really cool, and it added improvements such as an SD card bootloader. Um, we really liked this kit, and so we thought, hey, like, let's just you know, have this kit available um, in the store. It's it's very complete and it supports the Oozebox project. Um, so we have it. Uh, this is it assembled. It comes as parts. Um, the um, the circuit board has the one surface mount chip put on it. All the other parts are through hole. It's really easy. It comes with um, an SD card which has all these games on it um, and a controller. Yeah. So it's actually a really fun project. And uh, we have one that's put together here that I can show off. Yeah, also, that's an awesome photo from John Janeer. That's an awesome photo. These photos are... Yeah, amazing. check out the first one. The first one's sweet. Yeah. With our with our 7-inch display. Let me get this out of here real quick. Look at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, that's you nice. want to go to the overhead? Yeah. Do a demo? I have a little demo, so okay. I can... Um, so I've got the uh, ooze box over here, and I've got this 7-inch inch display, and I've got the SES controller. And um, I'll play... Uh, Let's see, what am I going to play? I'm going to play Megatrist. Wing. Let me move the speaker. I have a little speaker. Okay. 
So um, there's like a dozen different games and demos, a couple dozen different games and demos on the SD card. Uh, it's also really easy to write more games. It's actually one of the easiest um, like DIY game platforms. Like I played yeah. around a lot with um, the, what's it called? What was the name of that other system? The Lamoth one? Oh yeah. Um, I don't even remember the name of it. Uh, it was so long ago. But um, I really like this one and it has a really good tiling system that's really, really easy to use. So like you can write like your first game in like an hour or two. And I still have the tutorials up on how to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't have tutorials on how to be good at Tetris though. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I like it. You can also get more SNES controllers in the store if you want to do two player games. And uh, I like how it has like a speaker output too. Yeah. Bleep, 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 or sound output. So, yeah, I can't, I'm gonna have to stop playing from the Everybody watch Lady Ada. Yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> but, um, but the neat thing is that there's um, the SD card bootloader. So if you um, reset, um, these are all the games that are stored. It's hard to see, but there's like Arkanoid and Bomberman, like all these games that were ported to the Oozebox, Donkey Kong, Dr. Mario. Um, so there's like, five pages, four pages yeah, of Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Um, and all the code is open source so that if you want to like learn like, okay, well, how do you write Pong? Um, you know, there's a tutorial on how to write your own Pong game, which, yeah. is, which I think is really neat for people who are interested in how to do low level game writing. Yeah. Right, this is a good thing to give a kid and say, you know, you can play any game you want. You just have to like, you know, modify it. You have to compile it yourself. Compile it. It's a good thing. Um, so yeah, this is really cool. And what's neat is it's all on an AVR, and like somehow they like got all this stuff working in a super tight like output loop on um, on an uh, at Mega 644. Yeah. It's running at 28 uh, megahertz. It's a little overclocked, but there it's you know there's no problem with that. Yeah, we okay. tested them and never had a problem with that. Um, there's also some extra GPIO if you want them. Okay. Next up, uh, this is a cool product. It's our temp sensor. Oh yeah, hold on, let me get the next demo. Yeah. The temp sensor is interesting. That chip is tiny. Yeah. Whew. Actually, you know what? We should um, maybe next week we'll get the microscope out and we'll um, we'll take a photo of the. Uh, yeah. Sorry, let me get my demo ready. Uh, take a photo of the um. The yeah, chip because it's it's a 0.5 pitch BGA. Yeah. Which like totally sucks. Um, I was actually, I wasn't completely sure that we would be able to um, have it up and running on uh, the pick and place, but actually, yeah. uh, the pick and place, the, the MDC. E even though we're, handling. yeah, even though we're about to get a new pick and place, our our MDC is a very precise machine. It's very precise. It's not the fastest, but it's very. And precise. we had a little bit of a, a, you know, a little bit of yield issue, but not not significant. Um, so hopefully you can see the numbers over here. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing about this temperature sensor is all the other temperature sensors we have in the store, thermocouples, thermistors, TMP36s, DS18B20s, etc. they're all contact-based temperature sensors. So what they do is they actually, um, they use the, the side effect that the, the diode of like a, like a, di a diode, forward voltage changes with temperature. There's like the exponential temperature E, BQ, whatever, over T minus, whatever. Um, and so by measuring the voltage across a diode, um, they can essentially uh, figure out what the temperature is. But the problem is, is that the, the diode has to be in contact with whatever it is you're measuring. A thermistor is similar. Yeah. The resistance changes with temperature. It's, it's, a, it's a temperature um, sensitive, uh, a temperature sensitive um, resistor. Um, so what's interesting is that this is actually does, does not use that at all. This is a totally different concept, which is um, an IR thermopile. And um, how that works is that it, the sensor, it's very small, but it's actually, um, I don't know the physics behind it, but it can measure IR radiation mm -hmm. from something. And so that's how it can measure the heat of a body that's far away. So it's actually measuring it not, it, you can measure the temperature of the sensor itself, mm -hmm. also this um, temperature of things that are in front of the sensor, okay. but they don't have to be touching, just yeah. in front. Yeah. And you can look at the data sheet for like the range and you can also like adjust what the cone of, of radiation, because it takes a measurement of an entire area. But um, right now it's measuring about, you know, 22, 23 degrees, um, which is the sort of ambient temperature here. Let's see if I can get it to, and then if I put my hand over it, um, it'll actually measure the radiated temperature of my hand, which is about 35 degrees. I'm not touching it. I'm actually just putting my hand kind of over it. Um, and then I can have a cold thing. I've got this like icy 
thing and then I can put that in front of it and the temperature will drop. Oh, there you go. So um, I have to kind of hold it without dropping it. But well, so it can measure, um, you know, hot or cold things from a distance, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, there's other sensors that do this, but um, this is kind of a, a low cost alternative. Like the Malexis yeah. ones are, are much more expensive. Um, this one isn't too bad. And so, you know, we can what offer distance a distance would you say it's good for? It, it takes an average reading. Uh -huh. um, so it, it's, a, it's a, an effect of how big the area is. Um, I think it's like, like a meter or so approximately-ish, mm -hmm. but it depends because the closer it is, the smaller the cone of the area. Because otherwise, I mean, it's, it's taking the measurement of like the entire room right now. Mm -hmm. um, so do check the data sheet because you have to figure out like the angle versus distance because it, it's because it's measuring radiated IR. It 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 can measure like any distance, but it's it's just a, a, a much broader spread of um, area that it's measuring. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Um, and with that, that is new products for this week. Short but sweet. Zoom.